You know, I was thinking a while back, I've been playing a lot of first person shooters, and I've been kind of straying away from the Euro junk I used to play and getting into games that were genuinely interesting but weren't really kind of in the kind of genre I really kind of got into, like those unusual, just out of fucking nowhere, bizarre high concept games that really can only come out of places like Poland and Czechoslovakia and all these other places. And then it, re then it dawned on me, there is a game that has been sitting in my Steam library for a good couple of years now called Gorky17. And I think I could call it the Polish Fallout. I think. This is a kind of... It's an RPG with team-based elements, turn-based combat on a grid system, about a discover... an unearthed Soviet-era city underground that is discovered by NATO and they start sealing it off and sending people in because apparently the press found out about it earlier. None of this is going to be brought out in the um, intro cutscene. I'm just saying that right now. Also, this is the cursor. I, I fucking love that. That is that is that is just something fucking special right there. At the moment, I am running this with a uh, voodoo uh, wrapper because if you try and play this on a modern graphics card, the graphics go fucking mental. Um, so, it may not be in a great resolution, but it works, and I will hopefully in later sets have a bit more tinkering and see if I can get it working absolutely fucking on point. But, do bear in mind, I think this came out 2008? Correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably will in the edit. Um, but this will look like hot steaming ass in terms of texture quality. The, the, the sprites themselves will look way more detailed than the background they're walking on. Just just giving you some forewarning there. In fact, if you look at the uh, lighting, you can see this... <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that fucking tessellation. Beautiful. Anyway, uh, not much more I can really do. By the way, options are literally... Graphics options are literally shadows and gamma. That's it. <laughs> That's your fucking lot, mate. And sound options... I've put the sound down... Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, and then the credits, which we'll probably see at the end. But anyway, without any further ado, let's uh, let's crack on, shall we? I don't have any idea either. And oh, now we're here. We're on a boat, motherfucker. And it is now just under a year later. So, boss, now can you tell us why we're here? Has anyone here heard about Gorky 17? Wasn't it a secret spy training facility operated by the Russians? It, it was shut down last year, no? Secret, yes. 
Spies, no. Gorky 17 housed military experiments. One year ago, the Soviets bombed it off the face of the Earth. No one knows why. If no one knows, why do we care? As you know, this town has been placed under military quarantine. We've told the press that terrorists have struck here with smallpox. Well, this isn't exactly true. We don't know what is happening. General Gordon Lamar, chief of this operation, has information that whatever happened at Gorky 17 is happening here. Unfortunately, his first strike team wasn't unable to confirm this, and we've lost contact with them. Where do we fit in? Our orders are simple. First, find any remaining members of Group 1. Second, Lamar's informant described a laboratory within the city. We are to find and secure the site. Everyone clear? Oui, I'm ready. Ovitz, are you clear? Crystal clear. I'm ready, boss. Oh yes, one last thing. I'd prefer if we survive. For such a mission, it is too bad we aren't experienced soldiers. Wait, we are. Sometimes experience isn't enough. And there we go, we're in. Uh, I would just like to point out this is a Polish development, so prepare yourself for some fuck you Russia. Uh, <laughs> quite clearly, Jarek is going to be portrayed as the fucking butt monkey as I've um, I've played a bit of this. I've got till about we cross this point on a plank, which I'm about to pick up. We will go through some bits of combat where I'll, I'll show how that all works. Um, but to begin with, uh, so first and foremost, you use the keys, the uh, directional uh, arrows, and that gives you a really small amount of leeway. This is not a very friendly map. Um, you will have a hard time navigating it and seeing what you're walking into until you've already walked into it, which is kind of annoying, really. Uh, I'd like... Uh, oh, can I not? Oh, no, I'm confusing this. Okay, no. Right, so, immediately we've been dropped in, and I'd just like to point out as well, we're being briefed when we've arrived. I don't know about you, if there's a smallpox quarantine, then there's most likely some kind of camp around the outside of the area. I'd rather do the briefing there, unless this is so so ludicrously high security that we can't even uh, have a public briefing. We've got to do it when we're in here. And here we go, combat. And... Oh my god! What the hell is this? I told you, expect anything. Enough talking, let's oh, go. Oh, Jarek, you complete bitch. Alright, so this is combat, and immediately we start with no weapons equipped. So, down here on the bottom left-hand corner, we've got our short list. This is not enabled with the mouse wheel, so I've got to manually scroll across everything, and you'll see weapons have level values to them. Don't worry, though, this is not timed in the slightest, so I can do whatever the hell I like. If I go over to here, in the bottom right-hand corner, I have weapon skills and personal stats, and as you'll see, at the moment, no one's really got any preference in anything. This is a you do it and it improves kind of system, which is quite nice. I never like point by for skills. I don't mind point by for statistics and like personal values. But when it comes to just magically getting a lot better at a gun or a knife, this feels like it makes a bit more sense. That's that's personal thing at least. Because if I show you over here, these are the all the kind of stats. Now you do have XP, you do level up but you will level up certain things. So walk range, I didn't level up in the time I was playing. Stuff like your accuracy, stuff like your ability to counterattack, and calmness, which I can only assume is some kind of anti-fear or just anti-routing check, hopefully we'll come to that later on. But yeah, and I'm assuming luck is based on your, is your critical value or possibly the chance for you to get like a lower damage incoming attack. But anyway, that's all of that. Uh, obviously turn one, uh, Return the return key will obviously do that. I then have the ability to uh, push enemies away and also go into a defensive stance. Now, in this kind of game, you have an attack action and a movement action. The movement can be taken at the beginning and at any point during your turn. So you could move half your allowance, fire, then move a little bit more, or you could simply go full defense, burn your entire action and just mi just drastically uh, reduce the amount of damage coming in. Now, sorry I'm explaining all of this, I'm really top loading this, but I just wanted to kind of cover everything. You do come with a bit of healing, trust me, you'll burn fucking through this pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, I get to about three combats in and then it just kind of goes, oh by the way, difficulty spike. <laughs> One gigantic fist up my asshole. By the way, I'm playing this with fingerless gloves on. For one, it's a bit chilly, for two, I've got to be at least mildly cheeky in this breakiness. So, uh, anyway, what we're going to do is Captain America over here. He's going to have a pistol. Now, guns are a bit funny in this. The pistol shoots in the cardinal directions, literally only in straight lines. The rifle can shoot in the diagonal as well. So the, diag so the rifle is 
pretty much better in every single way, but the pistol ammo is a bit more prevalent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, um, who is this again? This is Cole. Fucking Cole Sullivan. They really went with a stereotypical American name, didn't they? And as you'll see, enemies have a area which you can shoot them in, so you don't have to be directly on them. They are a little forgiving. And this is a Sphinx? I have no idea. But anyway, this thing's got a decent amount of movement. As you can see, it can move up to here and then attack. So if I stand here, it will just walk across and smack me. If I stand here, I can now shoot it, but it can't get to me in time. Blink. And yeah, there are three categories of armor. You have light armor, where pretty much 100% of the damage will blow straight through. Medium armor, which will soak a little bit. And heavy armor, which will take a fairly large chunk. Every weapon doesn't have just a set value of damage, it ha also has a amount that will penetrate through certain types of armour. Most stuff will go through 100% at 100% in light armour, but some will lose a lot of damage as you upgrade that, uh, as upgrade that uh, damage. So, yeah, as you can see, now that I've hit it, I can now see that it has light armour. This, this is kind of the thing. This is what I like about Eurojank games. They have some cool fucking ideas. Alright, so Thierry who I'm going to pop there is going to be my rifleman for this. So I'm just going to pop a shot. Ah, and also, just for once you've got a weapon equipped, right click, brings up your weapon, left click, makes you shoot. Just little things, but quality of life wise, I really like that. One other thing I would say is you're going to want to get your ghost to specialise in a weapon very quickly. So what I'm going to do... Oh, no, hang on. No, no. <laughs> Wait, I can use matches? I, I have no fucking clue, but okay. Uh, what I'm going to do, you're going to have a bayonet, and then, right, you're probably going to run over this way. So what I'm going to do is, just pop you there, and then we're going to defend. Right, and we'll end our turn there. So this weird leopard xenomorph thing is going to run over and completely fail to do anything of use because it couldn't end its turn and make an attack in a diagonal. Again, melee, it's a little bit fucking weird. If I show you, I can't actually melee attack in a diagonal. Personally, I feel that's a bit stupid because I would feel that if you wanted uh, if you wanted melee to be more versatile, having just every single square around you be a, a valid attack point would be really good for steaming in and attacking at all sorts of angles, but I guess not. So what I'm going to do, step over here and stab! Get fucking chibbed, you cunt! Right, there we go, and now because I have barely used any of my movements, I'm now going to go... Hmm... Yeah, now the thing is, attacks of opportunity onto things, so I can com I can disengage pretty easily just by going up here, and yeah, <laughs> they're very polite down here, I have to say. Right, uh, now unfortunately, because he's moved a bit closer, I've got to move a bit further in, and then pop a shot there, and one of those, you cheeky little fuck, and right, now it's down to ten. Hopefully, I can pop him with this. Yeah, there we go, so occasionally, I will get a bonus, I will get bonus damage, and I believe that is a crit. So, crits do give you more damage, and there we go. So, experience doesn't necessarily just seem to be based by who you, who gets the kill, because Thierry um, did more damage, so he got more XP, whereas Jarek didn't really. But experience is entirely separate to weapon skill, which I really quite like. So you can still have a very tanky, in the middle of the fight sort of character, and although you may not necessarily get the kill every time, you'll still get better at being a tanky, fighty character, which I appreciate. Now, we need to head down this way. And we can see some uh, very lime flavored people. Hey guys, over here. I found what's left of Group 1. Oh, yeah, zoom in! <laughs> Fucking 360p. This is. was Leif Sorensen. <laughs> One of the best computer specialists in NATO. I recognize this man. He was Giancarlo Trotti. Part of the Italian Special Forces attached to NATO. This man was like a rock. You could put a live grenade in his pocket and he wouldn't even break a sweat. How the fuck did you find that yeah. out? Well, he sure looks calm now, doesn't he? Watch it, Ovitz. This was my friend that you're talking about. Jarek, stop being a bitch! Wait, Can't you take joke? Knock it off, both of you. We don't have time to deal with your nonsense. Take a look at their bodies. There's something very wrong with them. Good God! That smell! And their skin! They're green! I don't like this. I have seen dead men. This is not normal death. This death, 
reeks of evil. Reeks. Enough of that, Ovitz. I don't need a paranoid team. If a guy like Trotty, with all his combat experience, died this way, we'd better stay alert. All right, then listen up. Group one had four members. We still have two missing, Joan McFadden, the team doctor, and Joseph Sashman, an English commando. I want to find them, alive. I want the commando. I, I want the commando. Shut it, Jarek! Something tells me this city doesn't like the living. Oh, boo fucking All who? the more reason to hurry. Now keep your eyes open. They could be hiding anywhere. They'll be hoping we can help get them out of here. Great, boss. And who helps us get out of here? The urge to smack him is really quite fucking high, but good grief. Okay, so we got some dead bodies, and if we right-click on them... So this is how you get descriptors. Anything you can highlight and get a name up, you can right-click it to get a little bit more information, or if you can interact with it, pick it up. Like this plank that appears to be phasing in and out of reality, you can actually, you know, get more about it. Also, I'd just like to say, I quite like the fact that this is quite a nicely established story very quickly. This game has wasted absolutely no time in going, right, Shit's gone a bit sideways, NATO doesn't really know what's going on, the first team went in and disappeared, we found two of their bodies who have died under very, 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 very odd circumstances, two of them are missing, let's go and find them. Really nice and simple, and they, they react appropriately to the monsters showing up. Like, all of this so far, very nicely put together. Seems, seems pretty good, actually. Not too impressive, I mean, it's not, it's not crazily, like, elaborate, but it does the fucking trick. Anyway, oh, well, by the way, I can also select different characters to be my point men. Uh, ooh, actually, while I'm here, I'm just going to nip into the inventory because I need to move some ammunition around. So, you can move ammunition and exchange items. You can't just do a quick transfer, unfortunately. So when I do this, I have to... And accept. And then I've got to do it with this one, this one as well. Which is, as you can imagine, not the most enjoyable thing in the fucking world. Right. Now, Thierry is going to need to give some pistol ammo over this way. But I'm going to make sure that Jarek still has some, because there is a fight coming up that's a bit of a bitch unless everyone's outputting a good amount of damage. And while the bayonet's going to be good for him to grind... <coughs> do excuse me, right now... I was going to say, he's still at level 1, but he should improve if I get him to uh, do a bit more damage. Let's have a look. Yeah, so pistol level 2. Right for level 2. So all of this has already improved. And as you can see as well, max damage. Now I believe it can be as low as 1. I don't think there is a minimum amount of damage you can really do. Um, and then you can see the penetration. So the rifle has very good penetration. Like 100%, 90%, 85%. Doesn't have much drop off. The pistol on the other hand, does kind of drop off quite badly. So, not bad. Uh, but more of a plinker, not really something you want to use too frequently. That said, the better you get at it, the more crits you get, the more viable it becomes. But anyway, um, I believe that's everything. I didn't just work out what the fuck I used the matches for, but anyway. Uh, let's move a little bit, and let's go and grab this board. Large plank. Ah, God! <laughs> okay, apparently there was something hiding on Captain, <laughs> underneath it. I don't like this. Why weren't we briefed on this? It is worse than I feared. Hey, you too! How about you concentrate and fight? <laughs> okay, fair point. God damn, you mouthy motherfucker, you. Right, we're just gonna move you here, move you here, and... You know what? We'll actually just leave it there for a moment. Let this guy come to us. Oh, fuck! No, there's two of them! I forgot! <laughs> Tactical misstep! Tactical misstep. Okay, right, well, let's move you over here and plink this motherfucker. Yeah, there we go. Some nice extra damage going on there. Uh, right, how far can you move? You can move that far, so I'm gonna move over here. You are going to take a pot shot. Ah, piss. Right, take a pot shot at that man. Blink! And then let's get, uh, what's his fucking name? Fucking Jarek over here. Ooh, no, in a second. Right, come over here. Shank! Give some of that, you fucking slag! And then let's get back. Let's see, how far can you go? Not too far, so let's move back over this way. Cool! And now they're moving a bit further. So. This can be a bit long-winded if I get into any combat that is just ludicrously fucking... Ah, god damn it, savage my fucking leg. Just being attacked by ankle biters. Oh god, okay, now I'm gonna get attacked by both at the wrong right time. Oh dear, okay. Grab some of that, you fucking cunt. So every time you get melee attacked, you get the chance to engage a counter-attack, which is, I guess, the really viable thing with melee, is you can do a lot of fucking damage rather nice and quickly. Right, I'm going to move over here just very quickly, because I don't fancy getting eaten anymore. Right, let's see. That guy 
could go down in the next round if I just plink him and get a good shot. Ah, bollocks. Very nearly. Okay, right. Um, no real point in wasting more ammo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip the knife. Walk down here and stab this motherfucker in the nuts. Get some of that in here, little shit. Right, and unfortunately I can't switch weapons again. So, I believe that's all we can really do from here. Uh, I believe line of sight is also a thing, so I think if you get attacked and you're not facing the enemy, they can deal even more damage, which is moderately concerning. Right, let's just plink you again. Yeah, there we go. See, immediately, just leveling up a little bit, you do a lot more damage. Okay, so, 18 damage. Can I... hang on a second. No, no. It would be really nice if there was a way of hotkeying certain items, but... Let's see what we get here. 15, 16, 17. Ah, well, run in and do the coup de grace, I suppose. Get in there and kill still, my boy. Get shanked. Oh, down you fucking go. Victory! That bloody nificent. Right, there we go. See, combat in this is pretty straightforward. There's no cover, necessarily. There's no kind of real linear shooting. I haven't encountered any enemies, at least, that do that a whole lot. Um, yeah, Jared got a lot of damage. I suppose you do take... Hmm, maybe you do get XP from getting damaged as well. Interesting. I may want to check that out, because I don't think Jared did a lot of damage, but he did take a good amount, and maybe that does also make an effect. Anyway, let's have a look at that later. Um... Oh, I mean, there we go. So we're taking a little bit of damage. That's not really worth burning healing items. I think the least you can get from these is, uh... The least you can get from these is about 30 hit points. So there's no real point in burning any until you've at least taken that much in general damage. Ah, there's a note down here as well. Right, let's go and grab this. What's this? The first one is here, BT6213. Alright. And we got a packing case. Now, I wonder if this is randomised. Let's have a look. Ah, okay, no. Uh, so we've got a flamethrower, an axe, a bat, and some more adhesive tape. Adhesive tape is pretty fucking good. It's quite nice healing items. So I'm going to jump onto the inventory again and now divvy some of this out. Now, so the knife only does 10. Now if I look over here, who picked it all up? Right, I'm going to give this and this to you, just so we can find the best one. And then, just equip this for a second. So... Yeah, flamethrower, level one. I don't appear to have any ammunition for it. Um, Powder-powered flamethrower. Okay, so maybe this is something that comes preloaded? Anyway, so we got the knife. Let's just see what carries over. Okay, so the bat has more of a drop-off, but it has better damage than the knife. And then the axe is actually... I mean, the axe is actually a flat upgrade. 180-70 compared to... 185, 75. Okay, so this does retain more damage, but has lower output, whereas the axe actually has a much higher output for what it can do. Hmm. And that bayonet's already quite nicely leveled. You know, I'm gonna, we're actually going to switch to the axe, because I just I like the idea of a very angry Russian with an axe. It amuses me, alright? Uh, well, butcher's tool at the very least. Um, right. So, rifle's still fine. You're fine with that, I guess. I have absolutely no idea how well that's going to work, but we'll find out. Right, so going over here will kick off a rather nasty fight. So I'm not going to go that way, if that's alright with everyone. In fact, I'm going to head over this way. Oh, I can go over this way as well. Okay, there's a ladder. Can I get at that? Uh, oh, hello. Don't shoot me, I am human. Are you? Who are you and what are you doing here? My name is Vasily Dubrovsky. I am a Russian army veteran, but I decided to stay in Poland after the troops went home. Are you Americans? Well, one of us is, I suppose. Not exactly. I'm Polish. Oh, he is Polish. Don't like Russians. Shit, sorry. We're part of a NATO combat unit. How did you manage to survive here? I do not know. It is so strange, so horrible. My friends and neighbors, they have changed, they turned. They become almost monsters. You can drop those hands. Do you mean to tell me that all those creatures were humans? Those creatures, I, I knew some of them. Five, ten years. Now they are no longer human. They hunt me like, like food. I lock myself in my apartment. Soon they come for me. Two come for me through my window. I, I, I think I must die. 
Then the window is clear again and I hear screams. Down on the street, I see two men fighting with... Don't worry, we don't scare so easy. Uh, you think I am crazy, but I think what attacked them is invisible monster. It was like the men were fighting thin air. Then their skin turns green and, and, and they drop onto the ground. Were they wearing uniforms? Like us? How many men have you seen all together? Yes, just like you. I think the men come from the sewers. I see them come out from the old Russian security doors. A true door is sewers. Look, you have guns. You, you protect me. You stick with us and we'll do what we can. Just stay quiet and out of our way. Uh, one last thing. Did you see a woman with those men? No, only those two. And now you. All right, let's move out. Uh, you are interested in those men? That's right. I find this on them, uh, on, on your bodies. You were searching through the body? No, 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 no. I search for food. I must have food to live, yes? And a gun, too, I, I hope. But please, here, here is the note. Hmm. I don't understand it. I think this is Russian. You, you, you came to a Russian facility and no one speaks Russian? Ovitz, you can try. I suppose. Okay. It says, uh... Kosov knows everything. He cares nothing for these people, but I do. If I can protect the Matrix discs, I might reverse this nightmare, but Kosov will destroy the discs if he finds them. He will do anything to protect his secret. I have hidden the discs, one in the port, one near the monuments, two in the city center. I will try tonight to gather them and return to the lab, but Kosov has asked to meet with me this afternoon. I fear I shall not return. The note is not signed. Do you think this could be real? Mix four discs with one lab? Add horror? We could be cooking, yes? Shut up, Jack. I didn't ask for any comment, Ovitz. Two men died for this note. I just hope it isn't some kind of joke. Listen up, team. I want answers. If the discs have answers, then I want those discs. Okay, let's go. Two members of Team One might still be alive. Oh god, and immediately we get attacked. Um, hi. Ow! Motherfucker! Oh, 